Hi, I'm Caitlin Andrioni. And I'm Liza Lewis. And we are studying um, an in vitro model of rhabdomyolysis, and we have been working on that for the past two semesters. So I am going to share the screen of the poster that we created. Um, it's a little hard to navigate, so I'm just going to be zooming in so everyone can see it. Okay, so just a little bit of background on uh, what we are doing. So exertional rhabdomyolysis is rhabdomyolysis that's caused by extreme physical exertion. However, there are a lot of other causes of rhabdomyolysis that you can see in our first figure. Um, it can be hereditary, it can be caused by trauma, and it can also be caused by medication. Um, and that's kind of what we're looking at. Uh, so this occurs because of an increased flux of calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum, um, and that causes a, or it's caused by a burst of energy, um, which causes all of the energy to be used up. So this lack of energy causes hypercontraction of the muscle, and due to the excess calcium in the cell with insufficient ATP to filter it out, uh, the cell begins to lyse, and all of the intracellular contents uh, spill into the bloodstream. So we are interested in studying the effects of um, the uh, the drugs used in storage disorder disease diseases, and what they uh, what effects they have on the in vitro model of rhabdomyolysis. So the drugs that we chose are metformin and rosuvastatin, and um, we chose metformin because it is normally prescribed to people who have type one or type two diabetes. And then we chose Rabuvastatin because it is normally linked to heart troubles. And then these two drugs, as you can see in figure two, have common pathways that um, intersect, which is why we chose these certain drugs. So these drugs do both affect HMG-CoA production, um, which eventually downstream affects cholesterol production. Um, so again, rhabdomyolysis is commonly shown in many athletes who overwork their bodies. However, we want to know if it can be shown in someone who's not an athlete, but is prescribed these two drugs for type two diabetes and cardiovascular disease, and is also prescribed exercise as a supplemental therapy. So these statin and metformins, they both have been shown to uh, cause apoptosis in previous literature. And this leads us to believe that uh, when they are prescribed together or even alone uh, with exercise, that they will increase the number of apoptotic cells in our in vitro model of rhabdomyolysis. So we hypothesize that rosuvastatin and metformin will increase rhabdomyolysis associated apoptosis both individually and in combination. So we, uh, for our materials, we will need 500 microliters, uh, micromoles of rosuvastatin, which is the cardiovascular disease medication, and then 500 micromolar of metformin, which is um, the type 2 diabetes medication, and then PPD, which is the um, in vitro model that we hope to get for rhabdomyolysis, and then we are using 293 T cells to mimic human muscle cells. And then at the end, we want to use a Alomar blue assay, assay to measure the viability of our cells after treatment. And um, really our first step is to split in, well, first maintain and then split these cells these two 9T3 cells that we have um, 
So the main goal is to maintain a log phase to maximize the number of healthy cells for our experiment. And um, two dilutions that we've been using allow us a range of different days that we can choose to plate our cells on the six, 96 well plate. So um, as Liza said, uh, the last part, well, one of the last steps of um, our experiment um, as each trial runs is to run the LMR blue assay. So uh, here in figure six, you can see um, the 96 well plate with the cells. And um, this is after we treated them with the LMR blue assay agent and they change color based on the cell's viability. Um, and this is because the live cells undergo a redox reaction that the dead cells, um, of course, cannot. So uh, when they are originally plated, they all look kind of that purplish color. And then uh, more viable cells after 24 hours that we wait uh, before we put them in the spectrophotometer, they start to turn that nice pinkish color. So we successfully completed one trial uh, with the rosuvastatin, and we were very excited to see that um, our hypothesis looks correct. Um, as you can see in figure seven down here, um, the untreated cells and vehicle control and just the cells that were treated with rosuvastatin, they all had very high levels of um, viability. Uh, we used actinomycin B or D, excuse me, as our positive control. Um, and that was just to make sure all of the cells did die. And um, the cells that we treated with PPD had a lower uh, level of viability compared to just this brosutostatin or the untreated cells. However, we did see, um, which you can see on this graph, that the PPD and rosuvastatin cells had very low levels of uh, viability and it was actually comparable to our positive control that was supposed to just kill them all. So next step, we plan to really run sort of the same essay other, other than we're gonna replace the rosuvastatin with metformin, our type two diabetes drug. And um, um, and then after that, hopefully it goes as well as this first one. Um, we will run trials with both drugs, the metformin, the rosuvastatin, and then the PPD, and then measure the uh, viability of those drugs with various, various dosages. So that's sort of our uh, second aim. Um, and so for our conclu con conclusion, uh, again, we did find that PPD decreases cell life um, in our in vitro model of rhabdomyolysis after, um, well, de PPD decreases cell life um, and rosuvastatin has uh, virtually no effect. But when we did induce uh, the cells with both rosuvastatin and then PPD, um, they did dramatically decline. The viability did. And in figure eight, you can see um, this is a picture of one of the wells from figure six of the cells treated with rosuvastatin and PPD. And you can see compared to figure three and figure four, um, they are not very happy. They are actually very dead. So uh, that does confirm our hypothesis and uh, we are excited to continue our trials with metformin and then both of the drugs together. Yes. And we would also like to thank Dr. Dochi for all her help and guidance throughout this first part of our project. And we are super excited to start on the next trial with metformin. And that's our in vitro model of rhabdomyolysis.
thank you for watching and listening. Thank you.